So as we prepare to work the first wrong side row that has three balls in play, let's look at the right side. So starting here, I have one slip stitch in color one, and then a make one, and then a knit one both in C2, followed by my stitch marker. Don't skip the stitch marker. And then the rest of the row, which is all border stitches, those are all done with ball C1. A. That's what C1A is for, is all these stitches um, are going to continue to form the border that you began uh, right away when you cast on. If we turn the work around to now look at the wrong side, so this is the row that we will be uh, working through together in this video. Looking at the wrong side here, uh, well, uh, once again, there we have right where we need it to be. There is uh, C1A, ready for us to work across those border stitches. And uh, there's something else I'd like to pause and talk about here, which is the, uh, the untidiness. Um, a lot of folks were afraid they were doing something wrong because things are uh, quite a bit of a mess, as you'll see on this side. We have the uh, woven in ends temporarily of the two, uh, the second and third joined in balls. And we carry those strands all the way over to where we want to start knitting with them. And it looks loopy and awful, but don't worry about it. These... Uh, woven in ends, remember, they're temporary. They'll be taken out and neatened up during the final finishing. So, um, yeah, don't sweat that. That's, uh, that's all part of this. And things will become neater and more coherent also as we move along. All of this kind of junk over here, uh, it's going to start to clear itself up. This is definitely a project where the beginning um, is, the, uh, is the toughest part, the, the steepest part of your learning curve is here at the top. Now, working a wrong side row. So let's do this wrong side row, step by fiddly step here. So uh, first off, well, grab C1 too. It's the, uh, the second ball of that main color. It's waiting for you right there. It's ready to work and selvage stitch, no surprises at all. You've already done this before. Slip the first stitch as if to purl with the yarn in front, move the yarn to the back. And after this, when we're working any section of the border, the border is done just in garter stitch. So border stitches will be knit on the right side and knit on the wrong side as well. And, oh, so close, so close. Is it messy? Yes, it's so messy, but don't worry because this is the worst bit. If you hang on through this, um, it becomes much smoother sailing. So here we are. There's our stitch marker coming up. We're at the last stitch before the stitch marker. So what do I do? Knit that final stitch in with C12, slip the stitch marker. I take this working yarn. I bring it to the near side of the work and let it go because I need to work these two stitches in uh, C2. I need to work them with the working strand of C2. So here's my working strand. And what I want to make sure I do is that I pick up that working strand um, so it is running underneath, excuse me, get my finger out of the way, underneath this working strand there, so like so. Why do I do that? I always want to pick up new yarns under old when I'm doing this type of work because this is intarsia. And in intarsia, if you pick up your new strand from under the old every time you change colors, they interlock and you get a lovely nice twist. Now I consult my pattern and what does it say to do with this? All right, it says that we are then going to purl to the last two stitches. Well, that's really simple. Um, here we go, there we go, purl. All right, purl. And then, ah, those are the last two stitches. What do we do with the second to last stitch? Well, if we look closely, we will see, ah, that's our dear make one. See the early video about the make one, if you need to do that. We know that the second time we encounter a make one on that following row, we knit it through the back. And then what do we do with the final stitch? Any trick to that? No, indeed, there is no trick to that. We just do a regular knit stitch with that. Now, I'm going to pause here 
before my instinct kicks in and look how loopy and ugh, just look at this edge stitch is just awful well what am I going to do well what I like to do you don't have to but it makes me feel better psychologically is I do a little tugging and adjusting to just I'm not trying to get perfect tension I'm just neatening that up a little bit so that it's uh, easier to work with now that took quite some time but what you'll find is that because we are largely going to be repeating this process as we go along through the pattern from now on till we, till we get to the final border, um, the more you do, the more that this section builds up, uh, the easier this is going to become. It will not be this fussy all the way through the shawl. Um, when we turn it around, we can see, well, there we are. We have begun. And since we have done a right side row and a wrong side row at this beginning section with our second color with our C2. That means that when we start the next row, um, we will slip one. I'm just going to begin this here. So slip one with yarn in front. Okay, well, there's one, there's the yarn in front. Now we're going to slip. All right, very good. And then what do we do? Oh, it's time to change colors again. Okay, so we have to find our ball of C1, which is hanging out behind the work there. I believe that's it. Yes, I make sure that that's the strand running, the working strand running to my ball of C1. And then what do we do with that? Ah, okay, we are going to do this. We're going to make one. And then this is going to be worked in simple alternating um, knit one, purl one. So we've made one, now we will knit one. Now we will purl one. Slip the marker. And when we slip that marker, it is time to change to the ball C1A. Always time to change to ball C1A. So I will look back here. And again, this becomes easier as the work progresses. I find the working strand of C1A, and then I work to the end of this row.